Seabrains is a powerful Cubase MIDI editor interface for Line Lemur. With over 1,200 presets, Seabrains is the missing link to Cubase's logical editor, providing many useful ways of selecting and transforming MIDI data. Let's take a look at Seabrains' powerful features. Here I've quickly composed a rhythmic cello part. Let me set the grid to 16th notes so I can see what I'm doing. Now I've decided that I actually want a much heavier accent, but only on the downbeats. Normally I'd have to tediously go through the entire piece with my mouse, and that's a lot of work. Instead, I'll use Seabrain's powerful selector to find only the notes I need. I'll choose In Region, Notes, With Rhythm, and In 4-4 Time. I want all the downbeats, so I'll go ahead and choose them, and hit Select. Done. I'll head over to my Velocity and Controller Transformation panel. Done. If I wanted to set them all to the same velocity, I could use the knob. Done. You will also use this transformation panel to change controller amounts. Seabrains comes with four transformation panels. Velocity and controller amount, nudge note trim, transpose, and convert controller. But let's turn back to the selector. So the selector can be used to find MIDI data based on its attributes. As I drill down the menus, I'm presented with different options. For example, I can find pitches within a certain range, high velocities, or as we've seen, notes within a specific rhythmic placement, which is great for drum editing. I can also use this selector to mute a specific CC number, delete program change messages, or filter out MIDI channels. It's very flexible. At any time, I can press zoom to enlarge the sliders to see more detail. The selector is a powerful time-saving device. My cello part is still sounding a little sloppy to me, and I think it could benefit from some quantization to clean up the rhythms. For that, I'll head over to the control bar. When the control bar is in its closed state, it appears as an elegant looking grid selector. However, when I press the center button, a number of different options are revealed. Notice how quantize and snapping toggle are located directly next to the center button. They are always only a quick swipe away. In the control bar, I can swipe over to one of the white menu buttons to reveal even more options. Snap type, humanization, channel assignment, and the specials menu that has just a mix of MIDI-related stuff in there. To return home, the button is all the way over to the far right. Just do a big swipe to the right. So now it's time for me to copy my cello part to some violins. I'll definitely need to transpose these up an octave, so I'll head over to the Transpose transformation panel. I'll set my interval to octave and press up. In fact, what I think I'll do is have this lower octave actually be the second violins and I'll add the first violins even an octave above them. So to do that, before I press up, I'll hold down copy. Done. New notes are added at the interval. Now, I have a bit more work to do, because when I play back the two parts with the metronome, I immediately notice that it has a slightly laggy feel to it, and it's not really locking up in the way that I want. So what I'll do is I'll head over to my nudge panel. I'll shift the MIDI forward a bit to give it slightly more energy. In this case, I nudged by 10 ticks, but you can select by grid, by 10 ticks, or by one frame for film composers who need to closely match video. I can also hold down the nudge arrows, and this will repeat the command. Just above nudge is note trim. Use note trim to change only the starts or ends of notes. Just grab one of the handles and slightly swipe in the direction. Hidden inside the nudge value menu are also a few convenient commands related to note length, quantize note lengths, legato, and fixed lengths. To close off the tour of the four transformation panels is the CC Program Change Converter panel. Use this panel to quickly convert values. Here I will convert CC1 into CC11. At the bottom left is the pencil bar. In its closed state, the pencil bar shows undo and redo. We all make mistakes. Press the middle button to reveal a number of common editing tasks, such as copy-paste, select all, mute, and delete. To execute a command, just highlight the one you need. The command is sent when you lift off your finger, returning the pencil bar to its closed state. Seabrains comes with two user-customizable spaces. The thumb key space is a handy lemur container. Here you can add whatever custom lemur objects you want. Transport, a few faders, whatever you need. Right now, when I remove my finger from the key, it will quickly get out of the way. However, I can set it to latch in Seabrains preferences by turning on thumb key latch. It can be resized and repositioned on screen. 
And lastly, Seabrains comes with 35 utility buttons that can be used for whatever other custom commands you want.